Hey there, today I'd like to address the sensitive topic of suicide. And I'd like to begin by simply saying if you've lost a loved one to the act of suicide, my heart grieves with you and um, is weighed down with you. I can't begin to fathom the bitterness associated with such an act. And I just want to encourage you to lean into the Lord. And I believe he will comfort you and give you peace that surpasses all understanding as you lean in and seek him in this difficult time. I'd like to also state that my intended audience for this video are those of you who have lost loved ones to the act of suicide and you're seeking biblical guidance as to their fate and the life to come and even where they might be at present as their spirit awaits the new earth and all of those things. And then as a secondary, uh, my audience might be those of you who are just genuinely curious as to what the Bible may say about the matter of suicide. But I would be ignorant and remiss not to consider and acknowledge the fact that there might be a small group of you watching this who are simply looking for permission to commit suicide in that if you could just discover that the act of suicide would not keep you away from an eternity with Christ, suicide could then become an option for you. And I want to speak to you first. Suicide is not and will not ever be an option. It is not the answer. It is not the solution. And I want to speak to you and encourage you that if God has placed you on this earth, and there is still breath in your lungs. Your life has purpose. Your life has value. Even if you do not believe that, and you cannot see that at this present time, I'm here to tell you your life is valuable, and it has so much purpose, and God has a plan for you, and the enemy would love nothing more than for you to take authority that is not yours, and place your life in your own hands and end it prematurely because then the purposes that God has for your life have no chance of coming to fruition. This situation, this test is not unique to you. Please seek help from someone certified, someone who has the background and the equipping and the tools to help you. You cannot fight this on your own. But there is no reason to be embarrassed about this. There is no reason for you to feel ashamed and to try to hide. There's no reason at all. As I mentioned, this is not unique to you. Your life is so worth seeking help. So let me be clear. Suicide's not an option. It's not the answer. And there's no reason to be ashamed because this isn't unique to you. Please seek help because your life is valuable, so valuable, and has so much purpose. So with that being stated, I'd like to begin by sharing my personal position that I do not believe suicide is an unforgivable sin. Many believe that it is simply because you don't have the chance to ask for forgiveness before you die. And that brings me to a great point. Ask forgiveness from what exactly? Does the Bible say suicide is a sin? Well, if you're looking for the exact verbiage of thou shalt not commit suicide, it's not there in scripture, that is. But the command not to shed innocent blood is, and that's precisely what the act of suicide is. Is. Furthermore, what makes suicide such a grave sin is really an authority issue. It is when you and I, who do not have the authority to give life and did not give ourselves our own life, take into our own hands life that we did not give and choose to end it prematurely. We don't have authority to do that. Period. And so, between shedding innocent blood and overstepping our authority and taking into our own hands something that only belongs to God, the giver of life, 
Suicide is a grave, grave sin. But it is not the unforgivable sin. As I mentioned, people believe that it is the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit or a mortal sin because they cannot ask for forgiveness from such an act before they enter into the afterlife. However, from a biblical hermeneutical standpoint, um, suicide simply is just not the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit that Scripture describes. Furthermore, Ephesians 2, 8 through 10 is very clear to us that we are saved by grace through faith alone, which means the act of asking for forgiveness can't save you because you're then relying on that act or that work of having asked for forgiveness to make you in right standing with God. And that cannot happen. Only faith in Christ can put you in good standings with the Father. And that is the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. That is the mortal sin, is living a life of continual rejection of Christ as the Messiah and the gospel message in an oversimplified statement. Now, we do see suicide in narratives throughout Scripture. King Saul, for example, who fell on his own sword, to avoid being tortured. I'd like to note that in none of these narratives is the act of suicide celebrated or shed in a positive light. It is always a result of punishment or a byproduct of evil or sin, and it is always cast in a negative light throughout the narratives of Scripture where suicide is involved. It is never good. I would like to note something, um, though, really quick that I think is interesting. Jesus himself was tempted to commit suicide. In Matthew 4, verse 5, we'll begin reading here. It says, Then the devil took him to the holy city, had him stand on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will give his angels orders concerning you, and they will support you with their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Now, in this narrative, Jesus is being tempted by Satan to kill himself. Although Jesus is not suffering with depression or another mental ailment or an emotional ailment that would cause him to desire to take his own life, my point in showing this narrative today is that Jesus himself was truly tempted in every way and can truly sympathize with us in our weakness as our great high priest. So in conclusion, suicide is a tactic of the enemy. It is not from God. It is not a godly desire. It is not ever an option, and it is never the answer or solution to an issue. It is a tactic of the enemy. Your life has value and it has purpose. If you have lost a loved one to suicide and they were in covenant with Christ, it is my belief that they are with Christ, even now. If you are struggling with the desire or the temptation to end your life, I would like to invite you to take a look at the description of this video and I will place a couple links that I think might serve as a resource to you and I would encourage you to seek help, seek the help that you need without shame. There is no need for shame. There is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Your life is valuable and precious and worth looking into a couple of the resources I've placed in the description. I would like to also give you an opportunity to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior today. Simply invite him into your life. Say a prayer to him and that simply sounds like, God, if you are real, I want to know you. I choose to place my faith and my trust in Jesus Christ and make him Lord over my life to follow his commands and his teachings. And I want to come right now in covenant with Christ and be righteous in your sight. And if you pray that prayer in your own words, from the authenticity of your heart, I believe you are in covenant with Christ and you will receive his Holy Spirit. You have received his Holy Spirit and his Holy Spirit will begin to produce fruit in your life. And so I hope that this video, though concise, has been 
valuable to you in some way, shape, or form, my hope, my deepest hope, is that you will be encouraged by this video and that you will see that your life has tremendous value. So until next time, God bless.